Bible Fellowship Church. This is Pastor Chris here, and I'm here with Daniel Bagapore. Welcome back, you guys, to Digging Deeper. Daniel, I lost my voice this week. Bad, man. I remember. I mean, I, I had to like, I don't know. I thought I wasn't going to get it back at all. <laughs> it was pretty bad uh, Friday night. So, well, yeah. A week so, ago. Yeah, so on Monday, because it was like two or three days, I was literally whispering. That's all I could get out. Shoot. So anyway, so I'm not whispering today. So was it was it like that one? It's like um, from Prince, Prince, what is it? The Princess, Princess Bride. Bride. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the... <laughs> That's pretty much how I was. I'm like, I'm a preacher, man. How am I going to do this? It's still a little weird, but it's all good, man. Hey, listen, we're glad you guys are joining us today. And I, I want to talk to you just briefly about what we talked about on Sunday this week. Man, what an incredible passage of Scripture that we got to, Daniel. God's been speaking to me so much about what our purpose is, what He's called us to as a church and really as a people. And, you know, Hemet gets such a bad rep, by the way. You know, we live in Hemet. People just diss on Hemet all the time. I love man. it, man. I'll take Hemet disses every day. Uh, right, right. And San Jacinto. Right, but this is our home. I'll rep it. I'll be like, hey, we're tough. We're hardcore. Yeah, this is our home. This is where God's called us. You know, Jesus had a home like that too, by the way. You know, he was from a town called Nazareth, and people were Can like, anything good come from Nazareth? Right, man. People were just like dissing on Nazareth. And so his home was like Hemet, man. I mean, it, and you know, when he started his ministry, guess what? He went back to his hometown. That's where he kicked it off. Mm. And when he goes there, in Luke chapter 4, he, he shows up in the synagogue, as was his custom, the Bible says. He opens up the scroll of Isaiah, and he begins what I call his inaugural address. Yeah. And he begins to tell everybody why he came. And, uh, and he reads from the scroll of Isaiah. It's from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 and 2. He reads there. And he ends with this statement. He says, And I came to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. It was literally like the year of Jubilee. Um, you and I were talking about this a minute ago. Yeah. Like, you were telling me, every was it every 50 years there was a special year? Yeah, yeah. So every seven years in the Jewish custom, they would have a Sabbath year. Yeah. They'd let the land rest. Right. So they wouldn't do any farming or any of that stuff. They'd let it rest. And then God would bless them in, in the sixth year with an overabundance of crops so they could live out that seventh year and rest. And then they would start farming again. And so it was just it was a way to produce more crops and allow the land to recover, and et cetera, et cetera. And it yeah. gave them a chance to rest. Right. Well, after seven Sabbath years, they would have a year of Jubilee. So on the 50th year was this incredible time when um, they would... Uh, basically forgive all debts. Yeah. So if you had loaned out some money to somebody, um, you would have to forgive it. Or if you had borrowed from somebody, that would be forgiven. I mean, if you, if like, let's say you were in a pinch and you were like, I sold off a piece of my land in order to pay off some bills and to make ends meet, you know, so in, in, the, in the year of Jubilee, that land would be restored back to you and your family. Yeah. So all the lost things were restored. Right. All of the debts were were zeroed out. But just, I mean, if you were a slave, like let's say, like you fell on hard times, yeah. people in your family died, you had to go work for your brother over there. Right. You would be freed in the year of jubilee. Yeah. And all the things that had been lost to you would be restored. I mean, it's this incredible picture of grace. It's amazing. You know, we're living in the time of jubilee. That's yeah. what Jesus said. He's like, I came to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, to set the captives free to proclaim good news to the poor, to sight to the blind. I mean, all of these things. We're living in this time where we have this incredible opportunity to go and be conduits of God's grace. Yeah. And to go liberate lost souls. Right. And I know, I mean, Hemet is full of that, by the way. Sure. I, I mean, every community has that. Yeah. And so what an opportunity for us to go out and to liberate lost souls. Yeah. That's our mission. That's what God's called us to. Yeah. It's exciting, man. There's dark places in our world. I think there's dark places in your world too. And God's called you to go liberate those souls. And, you know, and also um, what an opportunity for us to take what God has done and go bring it to people that desperately need it. You said you know, something to me about beauty from ashes. Oh, yeah. So in Isaiah 61, chapter, uh, chapter 61, verse 3, he says that he will bring beauty from ashes. Right. And he would bring about this, this ointment of joy instead of mourning and there'd be a time of praise and that they would be established and planted at, as oaks, of, oaks righteousness. of righteousness yeah for to display his splendor and his glory yeah, i just thought that was so cool because for those of us who feel like well what if you've damaged your life beyond repair yeah right yeah oh absolutely there's a lot of people who would say look i've screwed up i mean royally screwed up repeatedly 
my life is like an ash heap. Yeah. And, uh, and how can you rebuild an ash heap, by the way? You know, once it's all burned up, you can't restore that. No. You know, and so people think their lives are hopeless, that there's nothing that good can come out of what's ever happened in their lives. But here's the beauty of what Jesus came to do. He came, as what he says, to restore beauty from ashes. And he says he would place a crown of beauty on their heads. I mean, from this ash heap. Yeah. They would rise and then he would be, he would plant you as an oak of righteousness for his splendor. Right. That's pretty awesome, man. That's good news. That's, That's really good news. good news, man. So listen, I hope this has encouraged you guys. I hope that if, you, if you're feeling down, that you would just embrace what God has done in your life and you would allow him to come in and he would free you and make something good out of your life and beautiful. And that you would in turn take that incredible message and go to this lost world and maybe redeem a soul that is in desperate need of that kind of a message and that kind of hope. So God bless you guys. We look forward to seeing you again next week. Daniel, let's go liberate some souls. Yeah, man, let's do it. Let's do it, man. All right.